live cast. I'm Pat Caputo, sports columnist for the Oakland Press. Jeff Kuhn, sports editor, joins us. Also, Paul Camp, Oakland basketball video online coordinator, is here as kind of the moderator of what we do. Real simple. It's just like a live chat. Put down your questions and comments, and uh, we respond through video rather than through typing. We're here every week at 1 o'clock. Jeff, uh, the NCAA tournament's coming to the Palace. Michigan and Michigan State are there. Look, I think it's a, a nice road for both of them to the Sweet 16. If I think one of the teams that may get knocked off, I think it's a probability that it might be Michigan more than Michigan State, but I really don't see either getting knocked off. Well, I'm glad you said that you don't see the either getting knocked off because while Michigan might be more susceptible than Michigan State, there's no way after what happened last year to Ohio that Michigan's going to lose to South Dakota State. No, well, I don't know. I, I think it's improbable. Don't get me wrong, but you know, and yesterday on Twitter, I I put down this. You know, you know, people were like, "Oh, so upset." You know, these Michigan fans. And when they did their homework, I think they uh, curtailed it a little bit. But South Dakota State isn't nearly as athletic as Michigan overall, but they have a great player. They have the type of player who could go in there, honestly, score 30, 40 points, and uh, you know, win. And that's Nate Walters. I mean, he is a truly, truly. A uh, great college player, and people don't even know about him because he plays for South Dakota State. But here's a guy who's gone into Washington. He's gone into Iowa. Uh, he's gone into New Mexico this year. They beat New Mexico, which is a three seed at New Mexico, and had big games and led them to win. So there is a possibility of it. Is it a probability? No. Yeah. yeah not a yeah. possibility, but certainly, you know, but he, he's up against Trey Burke, and that is a, a great matchup. But I'll tell you what. You know, people can laugh all they want about this, but if you were those two kids were playing a one-on-one -on -one game and it weren't, you know, everybody else, I'm not so sure Walters wouldn't beat him. He's that good. Well, Pat, Pat, I'm going to laugh, and I haven't done my homework, as you say on Twitter. There's no way this Walter guys is com Walters guy is coming into the Palace and Trey Burke's backyard and, and knocking off Michigan. There's no way. Michigan has been tested this year in the Big Ten. Trey Burke is supposedly a, a no-brainer for a first-round NBA draft pick. Michigan learned last year against Ohio what can happen in the first round. There's no way that they're coming in and getting spanked in the Palace. I don't well, care I what. I'll tell you something. I've seen Walters Twitter. play. All right, I've seen him play live. I, Paul Camp was sitting right next to me, I believe, the day that I saw him play. You have. So he saw him play as well, and I've seen him play on television a number of different times. And uh, if his name were, if he were a European, all right, okay. or if he were an African American, and he weren't from St. Cloud, Minnesota, and he weren't playing at South Dakota State, he was just what he is as a player, you wouldn't have that same tone about it. He's very different than what you think. And it's not like he's a great shooter and he just lights it up. As a matter of fact, that might be the weakness of his game is three-point shooting. But everybody tries to curl out him, and all he does is go right around him and score. He's a he he is a player who the NBA scouts are kind of they're, they're they don't know what to do about him. They just really don't. Paul, you I have him. seen Walters a number of times. Wait. I've never actually seen him beat Oakland though. Yeah, okay. We got to get the unbiased view, a guy who covered the Summit League, Paul, on on this one. I'll say what I said, man. There's no way this guy is coming into the Palace of Auburn Hills and taking over or dominating Trey Burke. There's well, no I, don't, way. I don't think it's Michigan probable. definitely looks vulnerable going down the stretch six and six. I mean, granted, the Big Ten teams are a bit different than South Dakota State, but if if South South Dakota State could pick a chance to play Michigan anytime this year, I'm sure they'd want them this weekend, like they've got them. I don't think it's a good matchup for South Dakota State because they're a team that uh, likes to run, and I don't think they can outrun Michigan. They're a team that plays virtually no defense. And uh, there are other players. They have this one kid named Dykstra who's not too bad. But uh, otherwise, they're, you know, they're uh, fairly vulnerable. I think Michigan State matches up well with Valpo. Valpo's best players are inside, but they're not as good as Payne and Knicks. And I think you know, Valpo's got some tradition in the NCAA tournament, the big miracle a few years ago where they went pretty far, which you know, compared to George Mason and VCU doesn't seem like so far anymore. But uh, uh, I think that uh, Michigan State will cruise through. And in the second games, I don't, I don't see anybody that necessarily – if Michigan or Michigan State loses this week at Auburn Hills, it'll be a big upset. The question is, did Michigan State get jobbed going further 
because they've got to play Duke and Louisville are in the same bracket. Right. Well, Michigan, I heard some experts say if Michigan wins, uh, beats South Dakota State, they get to have probably VCU in the second round. I mean, there are a lot of people saying that Michigan would have a hard time against them too. Well, they got a, they got a tournament pedigree a couple years ago. They did well, and they got a good wow. team. Right. I'm just saying that if the Big Ten is as good as everybody said it is during the course of the season, I'm one that bought in. I really think the Big Ten is tough. That I don't think Michigan or Michigan State – uh, is going to falter here at uh, this weekend. Now, coming up at 110, we're going to talk about the Lions and what they've done in free agency. We'll also get into at 120, uh, Pavel Datsuk, uh, kind of the 8,000 uh, pound gorilla in the room. You know, Pavel Datsuk returning to Russia. Nobody's talked about this. Red Wings have won a couple games now, so it kind of has simmered down. But uh, we'll talk about that as well at 120. 125, we'll get into the Tiger Closer situation with Bruce Rondone. But throughout this conversation, if you want to leave a question or comment, please do. To the best question and comment today, we're giving away the Dickie V book. All right. As promoted by none other Billis than ESPN's Jay this Billis. Week. This is that book you saw yes. Jay Billis promote on Twitter. Yeah, Go, it v retails book. for what? What does it retail for, Pat? Like $15.99? Uh, it retails for $18.95. $18.99. It's a steal today on the Oakland Press Shopping Network. There you go. So, <laughs> good best question, comment. You know, Jeff will make sure you get it. I always put Jeff in charge of this, even though yeah. he's my boss. You guys are awesome, man. There you awesome, go. The Dickie baby. V book. We got the Dickie V book. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. It's awesome. Oh. With the capital A. Oh, yeah. Look at that. The wind. So, do you guys just want to jump into the Lions early then? Hey, Walters, I'll tell you what. He's the real I will. Hero. I do want to mention to the to the followers out there today, those following along, it's very simple. It's as simple as ever to leave us a comment. We've even got the, the login comment box automatically displayed for you. You don't even have to click comment now. Type in a name, whatever name you want, or you can sign in with your Facebook, Twitter. Even if you're still rocking MySpace, you can still sign in with that. Leave us a question for Pat, and we'll get you on the air. Yeah, we'd love to talk to you, you know, and uh, don't be freaked out by the, this Google Hangout thing. We love it, but uh, if you're not on Google Hangout, you can leave a question or comment. And it's important to us. We want to have some interaction. Here. Um, Jeff, you look at uh, uh, Michigan. What kind of uh, grade would you give John Beeline for coaching this year? Man, that's tough. Again, I, I, I think I think Michigan faltered coming down the stretch. I think they, they let some games get away that they should have won. Penn State and, uh, and Indiana, of course, last game of the year. You know, he's got athletes to work with. I, you know, definitely not an A, but I'd put him in the B range. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd give him a B, too, you know, but I, I would give Tom Izzo an A. Oh. I think Tom Izzo has done a great job this year, and I don't know how far State's going to go in the tournament, but I didn't think Michigan State would be nearly this good this year. After I agree. Draymond Green. And when I still look at these two teams, I think the big difference between the two is the coach, and it's not a knock on B-line. I mean, it's just Tom Izzo casts this shadow. And the other thing, too, it's underrated. You know, we're here in Oakland County, and it, but I don't think it's uh, because we're prejudiced for Oakland County when we say this, but I think Dane Fife's been a great addition to his staff. When Dane Fife was at Indiana, uh, Purdue, Fort Wayne, they were always prepared. And even though he was a young head coach, I think he's helped uh, Izzo in a lot of ways. I agree with that, but, but Pat, I maintain Michigan down the stretch, late in games, has to come out with a killer mentality or a prepared mentality that they're ready to play and they want it. I, I think they're a little young and, and have made some mistakes that I don't necessarily pin it on beeline, but uh, at some point these kids have to show the potential they came here with. Hey, guys, let's not, let's not shortchange new Fort Wayne coach Tony Jasek. Uh, the Mastodons, of course, upset Oakland last week at the Summit League Tournament. Uh, Greg Campy heaping much praise on Tony Jasek. But uh, I wanted to get into well, this line. It's kind of interesting, Paul. I read this thing about Walters. It was from the NBA draft.com. said that he lit up uh, uh, Indiana, Purdue, Fort Wayne for 53 and then did it against better competition the following week when the game we saw, he got like 39 or whatever it was. When in actuality, Indiana, Purdue, Fort Wayne beat Oakland three times. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Fort Wayne was pretty close to uh, upsetting South Dakota State on their own floor too. Yeah, well, I'm not. I think yeah, that was I'm the, just saying, Dane Fife did a terrific job there. Oh, yeah, you know, sure. There's all this talk about Bakari Alexander, and he certainly helped John Beeline in Michigan. 
Well, they, if you want to, if you want to talk about Fife's pedigree, talk about. Uh, I believe Tony Jess was a Fife assistant at, and then took over the program. Yeah, I believe a lot so, of those kids were recruited by Dane. Yep. So. Uh, let's get into those Lions free agency. We actually already have a question from Mike, the PA. Yes. Yeah, should the Lions go after Darius Hayward Bay? Uh, can you can you talk about him on air? Yeah, I mean. Sure. No, we can't. No, I uh, to me, uh, Darius, Mike, appreciate the question, comment. I wouldn't touch him with the 10-foot pole. I don't think the Lions have to go after him. He's got great speed, but he's been somebody who's been more uh, a bust than a productive player at Oakland, and I believe the Lions can uh, help themselves a great deal in the draft. This is my ideal draft for the Lions, as it is stands right now. If this happens, I think they're doing very well. In the first round, they take Bartavius Mingo from LSU. In the second round, they take Jonathan Banks from Mississippi State because he may fall there, uh, but he's a terrific player. And in the third round, they get a wide receiver, and the one that I like more than any other that may be available there is DeAndre, uh, DeAndre Hopkins from Clemson. And another player, everybody talks about this kid, uh, Tavon Austin from West Virginia, and they should. I mean, he's a spectacular playmaker. But his teammate, Stedman Bailey, Jeff, I think is going to be a good NFL player. He doesn't run the blistering 40 times. But he'd be an ideal slot receiver, especially with the Lions, where they're going to be one-on-one. -on -one, they're going to be seeing some zones, everybody going. And that kid, is he's a great football player. So, you know, those are that's what I think. And they should get somebody in the draft for wide receiver and not worry about taking somebody like who's a bust somewhere else. You actually think you trust the Lions to come up with good picks in the draft after what yes, they did last year? You know, I, you know I, Jeff, they got off to a great free agent start. I didn't like the Reggie Bush sign the day it happened. And I wrote a column about it and said, hey, did they buy fool's gold here? But they ended up getting some defensive players, and they re-signed their key de defensive players. Right, right. They've had a plan this offseason, and so far they've implemented. Now it's just starting, but I really like what the Lions have done this offseason. I, I thought their best, they, their key priority wasn't Cliff Averill, it was Chris Houston. They signed right. him back. I right. thought that DeAndre Levy, to me, is a very underrated player by Lions fans. They signed him back. And uh, they, they signed this kid, I always like to call him Glover Quinn, but it's Glover Quinn, um, the safety from Houston, who's right. an upgrade from Louis Delmas. Then they got Delmas back. Right. And well, uh, I agree. I agree with you there, Pat. It's just these are the lions. I don't trust the draft pick. Last year, they're going to come out on the uh, and first available. It's going to be again. They're going to draft to the future. Oh, we got this tight end available in the first round, and a luxury pick. But, you know, I, I, just, I think they, I think right now the, the thing they have to do with free agency is kind of be calm, see what happens. There's a lot of players out there. You know, take some low-hanging fruit as it becomes available, that type of thing. I don't think they have to stretch and go out and sign a hey, 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 Davian Hayward Bay right now because eventually his price is going to come down. And by the way, I'm dangling some low-hanging fruit right in front of you. <laughs> the Dickie V book. There it is. Hey, an elevator man, baby. Hey. So you you like what the Lions have done so far, and more importantly, you think this management staff is going to do the right thing come draft time. You know what? I think they learn from their mistakes. I think what happens in the NFL, sometimes you get success, and uh, what you took you to get success, you don't realize how hard you work and how dedicated you have to be in a certain way, and not just their management staff or their coaching. I think collectively the Lions kind of got off track last year. And it, it snowballed on them all the way through the season. But I think that uh, they've had a couple months to regroup, and I've been impressed so far. I've last been very year, impressed. Last year, a lot of the Lions' problems, I think, started with off-season arrests. And yeah, absolutely. So turmoil that happened, punching in practice and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, Titus right. Young is gone. I thought it was significant what uh, Chris Houston said, you know, about, like, distractions and Titus Young. Titus Young was – that wasn't good. It wasn't only him. It was off the field things with Fairley and LaShore right, right. and Aaron Berry. Uh, but a couple of those guys are gone now. The two guys that remain haven't shown any uh, inclination to make mistakes. It may actually help them. Um, you know, the Reggie Bush signing, for example, that was just a big name, but it seemed to be fairly reasonable price. And uh, I, I think they're, they're off to a good start. But they have to get a rush end. They have to think defense in the first two picks. And I say this. I say this every day, Jeff that the Lions, when they draft at the end of April, in the first three rounds, they have to ask themselves this question first about those first three picks. 
can they start for us now? I agree. And if they can, if the answer is no, I agree. Don't, don't try to sell you know some fool right. gold to us. Right. Because hey, you, know, uh, they, you know the Lions the NFL, already lost work that way. Lions yeah. already lost Cliff Averill to Seattle. Do they have to worry about losing Justin Durant to Chick Fil A? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. They got the new thing where NFL players are working. I can't think of the kid's name. He's on a practice squad. He works at Jimmy John's. And I know Jeff's real happy that Adrian Dantley, the former Piston, even though he's set for life, is working as a crossing guard because even though he makes $14,000 a year, he likes the health insurance. Yeah. Can you guys think of another prominent athlete who works a, you know, a regular civilian job like that these days? I don't know. Sometimes it happens. They take internships and do different things. A lot of times they do it like in broadcasting. They set themselves up to do that when they're done. Yeah, right. Darren McCarty works at that pawn shop, right? Yeah, he does. He does. You know, so but after his, back, it's actually uh, made him pretty uh, popular. But anyway, you guys um, want to get into uh, the Red Wings? Talking about Pavel Datsuk. Uh, report came out earlier, or I'm sorry, last week, suggesting Datsuk might be one and done with the Red Wings after next season, heading back to Russia. And he had made some comments during the lockout that he was looking to head back there, um, you know, in the future. So, well, there are a couple of things that are talked about, I think, behind closed doors by the Red Wings virtually every day. One of them is, when are they going to get their new arena? I think they want it desperately uh, for obvious reasons. And then the other one is Pavel Datsuk. That is an absolutely accurate report. Uh, Pavel Datsuk, people at the Red Wings talk about this all the time. In, behind closed doors, it's not something you talk about po uh, publicly. Public, we don't out here. The pundits, like you and I, Jeff, the fans, they don't want to even think of the, uh, the Red Wings without Pavel Datsuk. I, it's a, it's not Nicholas Lidstrom, but it's it's close. It, no, there's nobody who's highly critical of Pavel Datsuk. It's not Sergey Fedorov, where he had some people. I thought he was a great player, Fedorov myself. But you had a lot of fans who were like, don't let the door hit you on the way out of town. Right. That's not the case with Pavel Datsuk. He's, he's a beloved figure in this town, vastly underrated, right. one of the best players in hockey. I think he needs to score more goals, physically score more goals. You saw what happened when he started oh doing God. that. You this see that shot but, Saturday night or Friday night against Edmonton. That was, Pat, that was vintage Datsuk Friday night. Well, he set up Franzen about five times, and then Franzen, you know, that yeah. Franzen isn't having a very good year. And then Zetterberg scored a couple goals, and then they beat Vancouver. For some reason, they seem to have Vancouver's number. But I have to say, Pavel Datsuk is signed through next year. Uh, he The KHL pays now. He's from Russia, loves his, where he's from. The KHL, it's unlike they didn't have a league like the KHL in Sweden for Nicholas Lidstrom to play in. So he's got a place to go, play, get paid nearly as much money, and he's going to be home. You know, he, he married a, a girl from his country, a woman from his country. He wants to go home. I mean, he, that's been as clear as day. So you, he's not the type of telling, guy that comes out and says it every day, but it's the handwriting's on the wall here. Okay. The Red Wings okay. are going to let him go and get nothing. But you're telling me, you're telling me, and, I, boy, I'm like, Lidstrom threatened to go home every year, be with his family, be with his kids, play in Sweden. Every year the Red Wings face the same thing. Conversation: Do we trade Nicholas Lidstrom? No, you sign him. This is hockey town. Well, what if he doesn't sign? You entice him to come here. Then you take your chances. Then, then, then he's a Red Wing for life, man. Now, if they, you can't dangle Pavel Datsuk out there. You, okay, you look at it this way. Talk him into okay, play. Today, today, Jeff, the Red Wings have won a couple games, so all of a sudden the standings don't look so bad. But there are times when they've lost to Columbus, like three or four times there in that period, and you look at it and say, well, they're not going anywhere. What are they going to do to try to reshuffle their future so that they can rise brightly as the Red Wings in the future? You know, you're going to let this guy who there would be teams that would die to have him help them win the Cup now would give you a lot for your future. You know, you then you've got to look had, at it. You Isn't really think they had those? Aspect of it? Yeah, do you do you think they had those same conversations with Nick Lidstrom? Do you think they 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 said, you know, this guy might bail on us, he might go next year. We really got to try to put him out there as some trade bait. No, because get. I think with Lidstrom it was a different circumstance. A How much so? different I mean, circumstance. Every year he was talking about. No, he signed long term and he signed for a hometown discount, like Datsuk did a few years ago. 
but he also was in a certain situation where he was older and it was year by year and he made it clear it was year by year right you know and with and look at it now it, it, say what did the Red Wings win the last couple years they had Nicholas Lidstrom what if they had dealt him would they and they got uh, two really good players now that were helping them and that they might have a chance to win the cup maybe in retrospect it wasn't such a you know a wise decision and and Lidstrom is different you know Pavel Datsuk as much as he's loved he's not Nicholas Lidstrom Nicholas Lidstrom after Bobby Orr and I, I don't even think it's after Bobby Orr in my opinion is the greatest defenseman of all time Pavel Datsuk's not quite that all right I, so, I, I agree with you there but again the price tag for doing this, Pat, would have to be huge. I mean, we're talking, you got to get somebody's top draft pick who has a top five pick, not not a 27th or 20th. Well, you're not going to get pick. that because you're going to trade him to a team that is going to want to win the Cup now and wants the final piece to put them over the top. True. You're not So you're not going to well, get a draft pick. You're going to get players for him. That's well, what you would have to think. It'd have to be a pretty high price tag in my book because wow. Pavel Datsuk, I think, I think you can talk him into staying. And I would anyway, give, we'd I love would to hear from you, Honor. What do you think about it? We're giving away this book, the Dickie V <laughs> book, to the best question and comments. And, uh, you know, leave your questions, leave your comments with us. We'd love to hear it. We'd love to talk back. It's just like a chat that you would have on a normal, we were typing back type of chat. Except we answer you back through the video. Yes, Paul. I have a feeling if we don't get any more questions, we're just going to have to sit on that book for a little while. I mean, it's got staying power. The tournament's just starting this week. Yes. Well, you know, I mean, this is a pretty cool book, but, you know, we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to give away the book, but mostly we want to talk to you on it. Because there are a lot there's of people. An, there's on an right autograph now. inside that book, right? Just type in a little question, comment in the box. That's all. You can there's do a Dickie V autograph in there that came yeah. with it, right? Yeah, well, I don't know if we can get the Dickie V. He's not going to be in town, I don't believe. But Bill Rapp. No, no, I thought, that, I thought that was an autographed copy to Jeff. Is it an autographed copy? I don't know. <laughs> it yeah. is. I can't believe we're putting it up. But the things we talked about today, we <coughs> talked about the NCAA tournament, you know, the whole thing with the Nate Walters, Trey Burke. You know, Jeff thinks that I'm crazy for thinking that yeah. Nate Walters is even in the same class with Trey Burke. But yeah. Paul and I have both seen him. Paul's kind of vacillated on it, though. He doesn't think Nate Walters is really that good. No, because I think Oakland Nate Walters is really good. I just wouldn't say that he's better than Trey Burke. That's all. Well, this I would say, you know, he could be in the same conversation, but I don't think right. you could say that you, he's better than Trey you do Burke. Not think, you do not think Walters coming in to the Palace and bouncing Michigan, do you? No, I think it's improbable, but I think it's possible. I think sure. they're I, I, I could go with one of those assessments, sure. And uh, that, uh, it definitely looked awesome good for the star league. Than what people realize, but I don't know. It's going to be like one against five. I mean, it's not like he has, you know, a lot of sporting cast there. Right. I mean, they're really they're uh, the rest of their team. They got a kid named Dykstra, but he, but he wouldn't start for Michigan. Let's put it that way. Right. So let's close it out real quick. We wanted to hit the Tigers real quick. Bruce Rondone maybe uh, saved, maybe bought himself some more time with the Tigers organizations. Well, how many mean, lives does this guy have? He's not. He, he's uh, he's buying time, maybe for him to be the closer. I, he may have bought time with him as the on the opening day staff. But is Bruce Rondon good enough to close for the Tigers? I don't know about that one. I you still know. say, Pat, closer by committee. And I know you say that's a losing formula, but it is. It's a disaster. I, now Leland's good at ma uh, handling his bullpen. That's yeah. A story, you know? It's but who they, yeah. who's going to close? Who's going to close? The, the it's, Tigers, who hey, do they play in the opener, right? They play Toronto or something. Who do they play in the opener? Minnesota? Yeah. They play at Minnesota, right? Right. They're, at they're playing Minnesota, it, and they're up 3-2, and it's the ninth inning. Right, right. And, and It's uh, one, it's one hitter there? at a time. It's one hitter at a time. If you got to bring in Coke to get Maurer, you do that. Then you bring in Albuquerque on the next guy. And you and you close it out with uh, whomever, but one out at a time. It's three outs. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff, what do you what do you think Joe Mauer's thinking when he sees Phil Cole come out of the game? <laughs> you know, what do you think he's thinking? Whoa, you know, I'm, I'm really I'm, they got Phil Cole pitching to me. I know. I'm in I know trouble. He's, I know he's not thinking much different if Rondon comes out there. Well, if Rondon comes out there, he's thinking I'm taking first pitch because it's going to be a ball. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm going to wait until it's 2-0, and then he puts one right in there about 99, and I'm just going to play my bat on it and drive it out over in the left field. It's a problem right, right. now. Uh, Rondon's done well lately. He struck out two hitters in any in spring training, but he's also walked nearly one in any. Right. He hasn't, his control has been better lately. I don't know what it means. I do know this, that uh, trading Rick Porcello doesn't seem to be quite as uh, uh, relevant right now with uh, Drew Smiley having a rough spring. Right. And, um, you know, Castellanos has done very, very well, it, it very well, and he hasn't made any errors out in the outfield. He's played 60-some innings. Um, but don't you want to save that trip for uh, chip for trade for maybe a little later? Or will he lose value, Castellanos, if he goes to Toledo or – over to Erie and is uh, doesn't do well. It's, a, it's an interesting question. It is. I say for the time being, bring what you have, go with what you have. But but I, I think they're going to need those starting pitching. That starting pitching. I think Drew Drew Smiley and Rick Porcello both belong here. Yeah, and it's you know it's a situation where I don't know what they're going to do. It it it's something that I I I would like to have a, a an answer for you. You know, like in the draft, I can tell you what I think the Lions should do. You know, with Pavel Datsuk, I can point out something that's a dilemma, but I would probably keep him, you know, just because, you know, he's Pavel Datsuk for crying out loud. Right? Hey, before we get out of here. I have no answer for it. Before we get out of here, just a quick mention of the Pistons. They did lose their eighth straight game the other day. <laughs> yeah. Did they? I'm still seeing that that dunk on uh, on Brandon Knight. By, uh, wow. What was the greatest dunk you've ever seen? You know, Blake <laughs> Griffin had one yesterday. It was just as good as DeAndre Jordan. Yeah, did you see Blake Griffin's head was above the rim yesterday? Yeah, that it was, was kind of like watching Jim Evans, except some <laughs> Jim back in the day couldn't dunk from the Royal uh, Tribune. That's he was right. the only guy I could see who could put like half his arm above it, and he had like a psychological thing like, I really can't dunk. Yeah. He'd go up and take a rebound on me. He was the greatest jumping guy I've ever seen. He was Nate Walters before Nate Walters. Oh, great. But anyway, enjoy the chat. Um, we're not giving away our book this week. We're saving it for next week. Next Monday at 1 o'clock, give us a good question, a good comment. We'll give away our Dickie V book. I also got a Mark Fidrich biography uh, to give away. We'll be giving away a lot of nice uh, books and everything. Join in on it. You know, there's a lot of people listening on this. But join in on the conversation. We'd love to, you know, hear from you. Okay? Until next week, we'll see you. See you.